All right, today we're taking a look at the Hindenburg. This is one of the ultimate jack of all trades cruisers in the entire game, and it's been like that for a very, very long time. And I'm very excited to do one take on it today. Uh, it's a very fun ship to play. I just don't play it all that often. Uh, because I actually don't know why I should play this ship more. It's really, really good. Um, you can play it with range or reload to different kind of play styles. So we'll start with reload. And if we have a hard time, maybe we'll try a range mod game. But I am running spotter plane and uh, the spotter plane duration upgrade to hopefully mitigate that uh, lack of range. We only have 17.8, which isn't quite enough at tier 10 these days. And I'm also running defensive fire since Hindenburg AP or uh, AA is not that good. And you can get crushed by uh, carriers sometimes, which is a little bit unfortunate. Of course, the Hydro is very, very, very useful when you're pushing in, but these days you don't really want to push in in a Hindenburg. Looking at the build, this is what I got. I'm also using the Eye in the Sky upgrade uh, just to have more often usable uh, spotter planes. I really like this skill. And I think it's very useful. Most of the time when you're using a spotter plane, uh, you don't get the full duration out of it. You only really get around a minute in my mind. And by that time, either the enemy ship has left your range with your spotter plane or they've come into your base range already. So it doesn't really help you that much. So that's why I'm taking that. Heavy AP, I do like to shoot AP in this ship. I don't wanna just play it as an HE spammer. We're also using Superintendent and Survivability Expert, Concealment and Adrenaline Rush, pretty standard. Hindenburg is quite tanky, one of the only cruisers in the game to get five heals, and we're going to try and make use of those. It's still a really good ship. Of course, you get that 30 millimeters of plating, little 40 millimeter cheek here, and that means the ship is very difficult to take down. Of course, there are 457 millimeter guns all over the place in the game at tier 10, but I think that's not too difficult to deal with because there are also a ton of 406 millimeter battleships that you just get to bounce for free, right? Like a Montana, like an Iowa, for example. So we really only have to worry about that Vermont as far as overmatch is concerned. We can pretty well angle to the other battleships, which is really, really nice. I'm also taking Expert Loader and I am running the Luchin's Commander. Um, I think Luchin's is probably at his best on the cruisers. That's just because it's a lot easier to get those hits in to get his reload buff activated. You can also use them on DDs as well. You can get that reload buff activated as well. But uh, I think it's a little more impactful in the cruisers. Battleships, of course, he can buff your secondary reload. And you can look for that in the coming days as 10.7 is releasing today as you're watching this, at least on North America. So I'm going to be playing a ton of secondary battleships because it seems like they are finally making them somewhat accurate again. We'll see how that actually ends up going. But uh, I'm excited for them to come out. I'm recording this the day before, so obviously I can't quite play them yet. But uh, I'm very excited to try them out, especially to see what the Kerr first is like with its now base improved range and accuracy that's just built in and seeing if we can build up to some pretty insane accuracy and damage numbers out of those secondaries. It's likely that over time I will uh, move away from a full, full, full secondary build, but uh, to start with, I'm definitely going to try it and you can see what that's like upcoming on the channel because I'm going to make a bunch of videos on that. Probably even try out some uh, secondary Montana, maybe a secondary Shikishima, uh, maybe every tier 10 battleship, see how they go. Columbo, I'm definitely interested in as well, just because the huge ability to start fires in that ship. It's kind of crazy what that, uh, what Columbo secondaries have the potential to do. Here we go with a hipper and he is angled, but uh, sometimes Hindenburg HE does some magical things just because of the high alpha. And we get six bounces. <laughs> Unfortunate into the superstructure. So I should be switching to HE here. So we'll do that next. And watch him turn out as soon as I do that. How funny would that be? And a Fletcher. The shell arcs on Hindenburg make it really comfy to play. All right, we're actually switching to uh, HE now. We can always use our quick reload just to get back over to the AP nice and quick. 
Your HE doesn't do huge damage. The alpha is kind of low, and you could run heavy HE. I've done that, but I find that the heavy HE actually uh, hurts this ship a little bit too much. You're forced into running a, well, range build, and you're forced to play really far at the back of the map just because of your stupid, stupid concealment that you get to. I'm surprised this hipper is pushed this hard, actually. Um, we're going to get into a bit of a kiting position. Of course, the Indy is really, really good in these scenarios. I think they got that Fletcher, so I'm going to hold for this hipper. Maybe he's going to turn out broadside to us, and we could get a really nice hit. Nah, he's, he's angled. He knows. So now that that's the case, we're just going to turn and angle to everyone. We should be able to bounce some stuff here. I'm probably over-reliant on the AP right now. It is just better to use the HE a lot of the time, but... It's it's more interesting, in my opinion, to play Hindenburg as an AP ship. Uh, because you can always play any HE spammer, you know? Um, I prefer the whole AP role of things. I get a little more satisfaction out of that. But admittedly, these guys are pretty bow on, so I should switch to the HE and actually use it. Here's a scenario where our spotter plane would be pretty useful, assuming the Iowa doesn't pop up. Hindenburg HE DPM isn't actually that bad. Um, you're, I think, even a little bit better than Zhao, potentially. Your fire chance is alright. The thing that makes the HE on the Hindenburg pretty good is its quarter pen base. So you just get to pen more shells than almost anybody else in the game. Of course, there's ships like Goliath and uh, other higher caliber cruisers that have that ability, but um, the bread and butter really is the AP, in my opinion. That was a 12,000 damage salvo onto that broadside Iowa. Pretty insane stuff. Another 10k. So that's two salvos. We've chunked them for 22k already. And uh, yeah, you can see why I like to use the AP. Something we're going to have to worry about. That's another 10k into him. That is crazy. It usually isn't quite that good, but... Uh, we have to worry about the Petro here in just a second, but wow, this guy is just allowing us to farm him with the AP. <laughs> That's pretty incredible, actually. Uh, I think his back turret was looking at us, so we'll have to be a little careful of that. But uh, it seems like we're going to lose this flank. And actually, it looks like we're going to lose this game. Oh my goodness, my team is evaporating. So that's not so good. Here's a scenario where Hindenburg HE is nice to have. You can actually pen 50 millimeters with it. So the Petros, Moskvas, Stalingrads of the world can't just get away with uh, playing bow in like this. I am wanting to focus the Iowa. I think it's crucial we get this guy out and our team killed the Petro. There's a fire, pretty good RNG there. And uh, the Monty's not quite looking at us yet, but uh, he probably will be. So let's just angle to him, make sure we're in a good position. Hindenburg can survive at these angles reasonably well. That most ships have a tough time citadeling it when it's angled. Has a little bit of turtle back. You can't really rely on it. It's not perfect, but uh, it can work. And at closer ranges, if you go broadside, I find you often just eat overpens. So it's a reasonably tanky cruise. Not as tanky as something like a Petro, but uh, if you remain angled, it's pretty good. And uh, we're getting a little bit less lucky with the uh, dispersion into this Montana, but uh, that's okay. AP is still doing reasonable damage, I think. Not really, actually. We should probably be on HE at this point. There we go. You gotta hit that upper belt. That's really what you're looking for. Probably just gonna get overpens into the superstructure. So you gotta look for that uh, juicy, juicy upper belt. And he's angled enough that we should be switching to HE. We can just get a bunch of full pens. We're already up to nearly 100k damage. And a lot of that's AP, so that is less healable damage, right? So you can think of damage in two different ways. Healable stuff, like fires, um, HE if it goes into the superstructure more. Different things like that are going to do less, are going to be more healable than something like a lot of AP damage. AP is far less healable, especially Citadels, not that we have any right now. But there we go, we've activated the Luchin's perk. And that means that we get a faster reload, just straight up. So our Hindenburg now has, uh, well, I guess we'll check in a second here, but 
Our Hindenburg has a eight second reload, which is pretty nuts for shells that are this good. If you're wondering why we're running away so much, it's mainly because of that Minotaur. He can really tear us up at closer ranges, so I don't really want to fight him all that much. The eight full pens into the Iowa. It's really nice when your shells don't shatter all the time. Unfortunately, no fire on that guy, but we do get a fire on the Montana. Ah, the Minotaur is there, so I am actually going to turn and push these guys now. Turn our turrets to the other side. We don't have expert marksmen, but uh, that's not the end of the world if you are planning ahead. So our turrets will turn. They're a little slow, especially with reload mod, they're quite slow. But uh, they're not too, too bad. And hopefully we can maybe charge in here and get something done. Uh, I don't know. This is not looking so good. But maybe we can pull it back. Who knows? I think I will use my spotter plane to shoot at this rune. Get some AP on his side. See what happens. We'll also potentially bait out some shots from these guys that are in B. I don't really want to push in without knowing exactly where they are. There's a Montana. That's really good to know. I'm assuming the Iowa's back here. Just turn in an angle to the Monty shots. We shouldn't take too much damage. Got a pen through our bow, but not too bad a deal. We just citadeled that rune at long range. That's crazy. Uh, it must have been some sort of plunging fire. Indy is usually not known for its ability to just pen like that. Um, but a little bit lucky there can maybe help us pull out a win. And, oh, our Monty goes down. Too bad. Um, yeah. Nothing left but to just full send it into this cap and uh, see what happens, I guess. So I'm just hopeful that my team can maybe take out this rune. There's an Alsace over here. Don't know where this Hipper is. That is a problem if he shows up on my flank and I decide to take a fight with this Montana. But we don't really have much of a choice. I should have been healing sooner. We want to get to our next heal. But, uh... Other than that, I think I've played this reasonably well. Monty's angled, so we're just going to use our HE. We're going to actually try and hit him in the stern. He's actually not saturated there. We are hydro. That means that the hipper is back here still. I'm just going to stop and try and continue to kill this Montana. We'll stay bow onto the Iowa and hope he doesn't get some huge hit into us. That would be unfortunate. There is the hipper. I'm assuming he torped us to stop, so I am actually going to go full forward. Trying to get my turrets around. That should kill him, I hope. Yes. Oh, okay, we dodged it by stopping. <laughs> a little bit lucky there, but that's alright. The Monty also got a shot into our broadside and the overbend, so lucky times two. The Iowa is going to have a difficult time actually killing us from these... From this angle, I think. So, oh boy, what a game. How do I do this? That rune is coming in. I'm gonna need to bounce one more and then maybe I go for Torps. Can't actually push farther than this. The Montana will kill me, guaranteed. So I'm just going to sit here. I'm in a pretty bad position. I'm on fire. There's a rune. Uh, I'm actually going to push up just slightly so that the rune can't shoot me. And we'll just get our front guns on this guy and hope to kill him. Get to our next heal. And I'm not paying attention. 6k. Arakazi's opening up. That sucks, he got my turret. Oh, that's so unlucky. Because now we're lacking a ton of DPM to kill this guy. Yeah, see, we would have killed this guy if we had our front turrets. Too bad. There we go. Bounce, please. No, he got the shot in. Too bad. 181. Can't carry that team out, but that's okay. You can't win them all. That is the way online games work. And uh, some games, some matches are just unwinnable. So don't feel too bad if this happens to you. Hindenburg, of course, struggles to have an impact when you don't have a radar. When your team, I don't know who we died to. I guess 
our DDs just outplayed them? Or their DDs just outplayed us? I don't know. But uh, we got run off the map. My team is certainly in hiding, and a full health chappy is going to go down very quickly when he's left alone, since he's been hiding at the back of the map. But uh, yeah, I'll see you when this one's over. And there it is. Not a bad game, honestly. As far as reload versus range, the reason reload happened to work in this match, primarily down to no CV. We were able to use our concealment a little bit better. And yeah, that is the reason that worked out reasonably well for us. Uh, wow, we absolutely crushed this Iowa. And a lot of that was AP. So he wasn't actually able to make use of those improved heals that he gets too much just because most of our damage was was done by the AP. So a pretty decent result, but I think now we'll use range mod just to show you that that is also a very viable build. And if you're struggling with the way <laughs> the long range meta of this game is, I definitely recommend uh, range mod. There's no shame in running that. The way Wargaming has created this game at this point, that's kind of what you have to do some of the time. And if we get into a CV game, you'll see why. Uh, you're just really pressed when you are constantly spotted. You always have to be watching out for those cross shots from battleships. And yeah, it's just a very, very different game as soon as you implement something that can spot you across the map at any time and either come deal damage to you or your teammates. So you can't push up and use islands. You have to play open water in the back. Even though we did that the majority of this game, I do think Hindenburg can use islands every once in a while. But uh, it is a good open water ship. Although, hey, I'm getting super lucky and no CV, so I'll take it. Uh, funnily enough, no, not many battleships. Again, only three of them. Uh, I guess maybe they're not in the best state at the moment and people just aren't wanting to play a ship where their primary objective is to gift the enemy team damage. So uh, I guess we'll probably stick to more AP again, try and brawl it out with some of these cruisers, take the fight to them, get some massive Citadel salvos. That is super duper satisfying with a Hindenburg. Uh, but as far as comfort of playing a Hindenburg, it's very comfortable to play this ship, especially with range mod. Um, the distance between your concealment range and the maximum range of your guns is pretty large when you have the range mod and then also the spotting aircraft. It's really, really, really nice. So you're going to be good in most games with this build, I think. And you're probably going to use HE a little bit more. So maybe not taking the improved AP on the commander might be a good choice. Uh, that'd probably be the last skill I get. I think the survivability upgrades are just more important. The base DPM and damage output is really good enough for most scenarios. You're going to light some fires. Your HE just punches through everyone, right? So really the only thing that's going to shatter our HE. Oh, this game is not a great example, but uh, the central part of Yamato deck is all. That is it. So everything else our HE is going to do some really, really good damage to. Uh, unfortunately, this Venezia is trying to play the game for others, and he doesn't realize that he only is in control of his ship, and so he's getting angry. <laughs> that is that is uh, pretty typical of, of gamers in this game, but uh, yeah, you really only have control of your one ship, and that is why, like last game, you can't win every game. Although, I would assume that... Uh, if some people had control of all of the ships in the game and then they lost, they wouldn't be too happy because then they wouldn't have uh, teammates to blame the loss on. <laughs> I'm not trying to call people out here, but uh, that is uh, something I think some people would re realize pretty quickly if they were the s solely responsible for winning or losing. They might realize they're not actually as good as they think they are. Uh, but as far as playing on this flank, we're going to have to be a little bit passive. Just because we don't have spotting, so not a huge deal. Our team is pushing pretty hard at sea. That's good to know and good to see. So we don't actually have to do a ton of damage over here. We just need to play safe and smart. So we'll angle just a little bit and hopefully that'll help people miss. Wooster is full range mod. Might even be range and spotter Wooster. So you you love to see that out of uh, out of the game. 
I would not recommend range mod on that ship. I'll be honest. Nice 7k volley there. The AP is no joke. The issue, of course, with the AP is doing damage to angled ships. The Krupp is not amazing, which Krupp basically just is something to help with shell weight and lets you know how much pen your shells carry. But again, 10k to the side of that poor going with the AP. You can see why I love the AP so much, but I think we'll actually switch back to HE. I need to start hiding and running away. Sporgone is just spamming HG, which, I mean, that's pretty pretty sad to see, but I guess I am at Angled Hindenburg, so HE is probably warranted in this scenario, but it is just a little bit sad to see. We've got to watch out for Puerto Rico. He has poor dispersion, but his improved hand angles, especially at longer ranges, do result in a lot of citadels on us, so you do got to really take care to be angled to that. Uh, Puerto Rico, of course, a super cruiser, so very, very vulnerable to fires. So we want to shoot some HE at this guy. Um, we don't want to kite away too much. Our Shimakaze is now here, so we should be doing all right as far as spotting is concerned. Let's slow down and turn out. Hopefully that'll dodge the Puerto Rico shells. He damaged Conda single fire. So we're just going to shoot some HE at this guy until we get another fire. Should be permanent. Maybe even two. I'm constantly watching over here for anybody shooting at me because that is the biggest threat. Oh, we even got the rear fire. That's lucky. So now we can get the two middle fires. It's possible we get uh, we can get three fires at this dude if we get lucky. Um, but so far our dispersion or our aim is a little bit off. There is a druid, so we need to deal with that. Alrighty. Oops. Sorry, I just kind of fat fingered the escape button. <laughs> I was trying to push tab and see my team and the enemy team list. But, uh, oh, Druid's up again. Always want to shoot TDs, especially with the way these guns are up close. You can do some pretty good damage. Yeah, FC 5k, pretty good, and got his engine. The thing about Druid is the guns are in the front, so he doesn't actually want to turn away from our Shima while he's trying to get his guns off, so... Um, he's really interested in maintaining an angle where he can shoot his main guns. So we can kind of at least, well, I want to, I want to try and force him to turn away so he can't shoot our Shima. That is my goal, but I'm going to continue to shoot him even though it's unlikely we hit at these ranges. It's pretty hard to hit DDs at longer ranges because your shells do tend to float. Oh wow, we even got a fire. He's probably going to turn in and dodge that. Cross maps from the Yamato. Wow, that is a long ways away. That is a very long ways away. Shit the Borgone here. I think we'll switch back to AP if the booster is just going to stay broadside. Oh, it doesn't look like he will. Too bad. Maybe he turns in. But we'll switch back to HE. Uh, are these 20 kilometer Shimatorps? I think they are, so something to be concerned about for sure. They'll likely be spotted, but it's unlikely we'll get a notification, right? They're spotted from so far away, but you don't get the notification until they're very, very close. And that is how they can sometimes sneak up on you and do some huge damage. Uh, this Napoli is rushing a gearing? Yeah, it didn't work out so well. Poor guy does not have Hydro. That is one of the weaknesses of Napoli. And he goes down. Although he did get our gearing with torpedoes. So our gearing not on the lookout for torps himself. That's an interesting one, especially because well, Napoli torps are so slow, right? That is, they have good range. They don't do much damage and they're not very fast. At this point, we're pretty even in this game. I wish our team, oh no, we're down. We're definitely on the losing end of the initial fight, right? We're around seven, eight minutes into this game, and we're down on destroyers. Again, we're having trouble with keeping DD players alive. Uh, so this is gonna be a hard one because the enemy team is gonna get probably a lot of captures on us and uh, we'll be forced to push in and it's a pretty open map. So it's hard to push in while keeping people behind islands, that kind of thing. 
looks like we're pushing down south, so it's a little bit uh, interesting. I guess uh, if our Shima pushes with us, the Druid, I guess, does not have torpedoes, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, speaking of Shima Torps, can we get past this one? Sure hope so. I don't want to eat a torpedo. Yeah, we're good. I'm going to use my concealment to... I don't even know what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to try and get to this island, I think. I think that's going to be my goal. This is quickly slipping away. I feel like I don't have any impact right now. You know, I'm like not able to really do a whole lot in this game. Our Puerto Rico just got absolutely smashed. So he's going to go down. It means our Smolensk is probably going to go down. Oh boy. This one's not looking good. <laughs> All right, the Shima's spotting us. We'll start shooting again. We gotta be careful of this Borgon. And the Yamato too, but uh, the Borgon especially is a little bit scary if we turn the wrong way. I think he's out here at this point, probably waiting for us. Again, using AP at long range. Uh, Yamato's got a very weak upper belt. Yeah, there's the shot from the Yami and the Borgon. So we'll slow down, turn in, and hope that's enough. Wow, he got he permanently destroyed my gun? I don't think he even hit my ship. Oh my goodness, it is one of those kind of days, I guess. Not every match, not every day, is a good day in World of Warships, so... Unfortunately, we are a rune now, at tier 10. But, uh, yep, there's the Citadel as we turn away, so... He got some pretty spicy dispersion there. Um, of course, it's difficult. It's pretty difficult to citadel a ship, a any ship, in a turn, primarily because, well, the aiming system drags your shells down. They don't. It doesn't take into account you actually turning. It only takes into account where you're going to go, and that is why, a lot of the times, your shells land short when somebody turns. It is unfortunate, but the way the, it's way the way the system is coded. Um. I'm, I'm struggling to find some positives in this match, guys. I gotta be honest, I'm pretty annoyed that uh, the way these two games have gone. This has been a pretty poor showing. Um, the game in 2021, I think, that is best described as frustrating. I think that is the best way to describe World of Warships in the current year. I gotta turn and be aware of the Orgone, but the Yamato could get a shot on us. Do. We're in a rough spot. We're in a rough spot. Keeping an eye out again for the Yamato shots. I think he's shooting north, so I think we're okay at the moment. Maybe we can take out the Borgon, but we don't have the damage output. No more AP, and then we'll just switch to HE because he's going to angle in. There's our reload buff, so that's alright. This should bounce. This should bounce. It did, kind of. And we'll use our heal as soon as it's up. Turn in to hopefully bounce. Yep. Alrighty. Oh wait, is it a torque tube? Oh my goodness, I'm I'm not even paying attention. I'm sorry guys, I'm just a little bit upset that um my team is just getting face rolled every match I play. There we go. Oh, I didn't use the expert loader. Didn't wait long enough. Yeah, he's shooting us. No, he's not. We'll stay bow in. Good dispersion, please. Nice. All right. Stay bow into the druid. And in 12 seconds, we'll go dark. The Yamato is all we have to worry about as far as killing us. Druid does not have torps. That's not something we have to worry about. And in fact, there he is. Good stuff. I'm sorry, I uh, I called that wrong. I thought he killed my gun, but it was indeed only my torpedo tube. I don't know why I thought that, but uh, silly me. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he'll forgive me. I don't enjoy losing games like this. I want close games. I don't want I don't want blowouts where it feels impossible to win. You know. We didn't kill him. Yeah, I think he's there. Nope. Maybe here. I'm 
I'm gonna stay broadside. I wanna bait him into shooting me. I'm gonna get this cap, probably, but uh, he could reset me. Never know. I'll use my next heal, even though it's a small one. Oh yeah, shoot me, come on. Where is he? You know what, let's use the plane spot. He's out of his smoke. No, he might be in his smoke still. I think we're spotted by a Shima. Oh well, we'll turn away and uh, start our assault north. I don't know how this is gonna go. I'm gonna try to keep my rear turrets pointed backwards. So how you do that is you constantly move your aiming cursor from left to right in front of your ship and that will give you that ability. Uh, our Venezia killed the Petro. This is hard, man. Oh, they took out our Henry. Too bad. That's rough. I just got a charge for decaf. I I probably could get torped here, but uh, we'll see, I guess. Oh, we're dark. All right. Still trying to keep my rear turrets pointed backwards, just in case the Shima gets spotted or spots the uh, Druid. Help him out, but I think this one's over. Hindenburg's a good ship, but uh, you can't win and carry too many games out of it just because you lack that impact of a radar on your cruiser. You're not a battleship, so you can't push as hard as a battleship possibly could. And of course, you're not a DD, so you're not a spotting ship, cap contest ship at all. You're just a damage dealer, and that is kind of the issue with damage dealers. But as you can see, it's not hard to deal damage when you're in this ship. This ship is really, really good at dealing damage. Uh, but that doesn't win you games. It can if you're in a division, but uh, you really do need to div up with something with a little more battle impact. You get spotted briefly. 15 seconds left in the game. I don't think there's anything. Oh, and they're back in A. Yeah, unfortunate. So Thunder Shells, so they'll overmatch me. Just want to make sure we don't get Citadeled, and we did. That's pretty fun. I <laughs> don't know how he citadeled me at that angle, but he figured it out. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Anyways, a rough set of matches, and yeah, not much, not much else you can do there. Sorry, I'm not. Uh, uh, I've, I've lost my energy. I've lost my desire to play this game today already after two games. Uh, yeah, it's it's. Yeah, it's not just you if you're feeling like the game is frustrating, all right? You're not alone in that. I definitely feel like that. Not every day is a good day in World of Warships, and not every match is a 200k, 300k, Kraken carry match, right? That is the exception, so. That's Hindenburg. It is a great ship, but uh game is frustrating, even without CVs, so that's a great thought for me to leave you on. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed, and uh, yeah, have a great rest of your day.